Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. On upon Airways salutes Star Wars. City wants to give airplane owners a tax break. Zenith Aircraft opens its doors for everyone. I'm Brie Cross, it's September 15th, 2015, and this is Airborne Unlimited. Attention all Star Wars fans, unsheath your lightsabers and man your X-Wing fighters. Get ready to join On Upon Airways for the celebration of the new Star Wars movie. Last week, a specially painted Boeing 787 Dreamliner was rolled out of the factory, painted in Star Wars livery. The rollout was accompanied by the unmistakable Star Wars theme music and Star Wars characters R2-D2 and C-3PO. And of course, a few Star Wars stormtroopers were on hand to keep the peace. This aircraft is the first of four to celebrate the Star Wars legacy, and it features a paint scheme themed to remind us of that little irascible drone R2-D2. A new Star Wars character, BB-8, will be the paint scheme for a Boeing 777-300ER, and two Boeing 767-300s will be painted in the likeness of BB-8 and R2-D2. It's reported in USA Today that ANA entered into a five-year promotional agreement with the Walt Disney Company that is set to release the new Star Wars movie in December of this year. It is also reported that ANA will carry the Star Wars theme through into other service items aboard these airplanes. May the force be with you. The city manager of Newport News, Virginia, is trying to convince the city council to pass a tax break for aircraft, but he's running into a lot of opposition on the panel. It's reported that city manager Jim Borey had proposed a tax cut in the city's personal property tax rate for aircraft of about 75 percent, but the council would not approve the measure. A tax cut proposal was based on a belief that it could help attract companies into the area that would offset the revenue loss through other business taxes collected. However, other council members want assurances that such a business would actually show up before approving the aircraft property tax cut. As it stands now, there are 114 aircraft on the tax rolls, and it's reported that it is more expensive to keep an airplane in Newport News than in other nearby cities. After the break, see what a kit airplane manufacturing facility looks like. Now certified Aspen Avionics single band ADS-B, ATX-100 and ATX-100G transceivers are the next gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, our website, or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. If you've ever wondered what a kit airplane manufacturer looks like, the Zenith Aircraft Company, located in Mexico, Missouri, is holding their hangar day and fly-in gathering that is more than just a chance to take a look. The folks at Zenith know how to put on a show. The event starts on Friday, September 18th and continues through midday on Saturday. It will give anyone interested in building a factory-produced kit airplane a chance to look at where it all begins. Various vendors will be there presenting products ranging from avionics to engines. You'll also watch as Zenith holds one of their home builder forums where people learn the process of building a Zenith kit. Added to this, there is a special mini project available for anyone to try. Educational seminars run the gamut of aviation topics. There will be a short takeoff and landing competition. And Friday finishes off with an evening banquet. The Zenith Hangar Day and Fly-In Gathering brings together recreational aviators in an atmosphere where everybody learns and has fun. Every Tuesday, we're going to look ahead at some of the more interesting events in the aviation universe. Here is this week's Aero Calendar.
Here's the big one we've all been waiting for. Being held September 17th through the 20th are the 2015 National Championship Air Races in Reno, Nevada. The mission of this event is to perpetuate the most unique air racing event and aviation experience in the world by combining the world's fastest motorsport with spectacular military and civilian air entertainment. If you can't make it to Reno, how about trying Great Bend, Kansas? On September 18th through the 20th, they're holding their Warbird tribute to honor those who have served. This year's Airfest will host a collection of World War II aircraft, including the B-29 Fifi. There will be rides in aircraft, a POW ceremony, an evening dance, and much more. And next, we have one of ANN's favorites. The Lee Bottom Flying Field Fly-In is also being held September 18th through the 20th in Hanover, Indiana, and is home to the region's favorite antique and classic fly-in. Called Wood Fabric and Tailwheels, this year they're featuring the favorites competition between Cubs and Champs. For those who travel in the world of business aviation, September 17th marks the MBAA Regional Forum being held in St. Louis, Missouri. This forum brings current and prospective business aircraft owners, operators, manufacturers, customers, and other industry personnel together for a one-day event. There will be educational forums, exhibits, static displays, and vendor presentations. After these messages, business jet market worth $21 billion. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude and slip. With integral backup battery, Safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to bendixking.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The market for business jets has recently begun to gain momentum, according to a new report from ASD Reports. The global market for business jets is expected to be worth just over $21 billion in 2015. Rolls-Royce has been selected by Airbus to provide Trent 700 engines and long-term total care engine support service worth $700 million for five new Beluga XL Air Transporter aircraft. The aircraft will replace the current Airbus Beluga fleet. The world's first all-electric propulsion satellite, built by Boeing, is now operational after an on-orbit handover on August 31st. The spacecraft's all-electric xenon-ion propulsion system contains a sufficient quantity of the inert, non-hazardous element xenon to last for more than 15 years. At this week's World Satellite Business Conference in Paris, SpaceX announced two new orders for Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy launch vehicles. The contracts are for the launch of two communication satellites in late 2017 and 2018. The FAA has issued an emergency AD for certain Airbus helicopters. The AD deals with the problem in the tail rotor de-icing system. The system power supply box could stick in the closed position, providing uncontrolled and unenunciated power to the system. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. According to reports, the Pearl N2 glider is being prepped for a low-altitude flight on Wednesday of this week. The altitude will be limited to about 5,000 feet as the aircraft is put through a series of system checks. 
They hope to eventually fly the glider to an altitude of 90,000 feet and break the existing record of 50,722 feet set in 2006 by Steve Fawcett and Perlin Project founder Einar Inavolsen. Doug Perinod, the project coordinator for the Perlin 2 launch, said one of the main problems faced by the team is pressurization. In the report, it stated he did not elaborate on how the cockpit will maintain pressure. He did say that the life support system resembles rebreather systems used by scuba divers. The Perlin 2 glider will conduct a series of test flights from Redmond Airport in Central Oregon over the next several months. The record attempt is currently planned for March or April of next year, and the team will travel to Argentina for this attempt. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.